It was an age of fire. Volcanoes were emerging from a tumultuous ocean to become mountains. Lava flows were solidifying to become land masses. As the lava flowed and receded, tunnels and cavities formed that soon filled with unique minerals, crystallizing beautifully out of various chemical compounds. But this volcano was different. It consisted not just simply of ordinary rock, but copper deposits. And as the crystals formed in the cavities, they chemically interacted with the copper, turning the white pactolite crystals into a variety of blues. This is the only place in the world where this occurred, and it would change the future forever. History records that on the 22nd of November of 1916, Father Miguel Domingo Fuertes Loren of the Barahona Parish requested permission at the Dominican Ministry of Mining to explore and exploit the mine of a certain blue rock. Since nobody knew what the Catholic priest was talking about, the request fell through and the heaven blue stone was lost in the limbo of Latin American bureaucracy. While for decades the locals of the Bauruco municipality went to the beach to collect these blue pebbles, it took until the 1970s that the significance of the stone was established. Miguel Mendes, an artisan from Santo Domingo, heard rumors of the rock and went to find it. It took him and a geologist friend, Peace Corps volunteer Norman Rilling, several trips until they could actually find any evidence of it. They knew they had something special on their hands, they just couldn't prove it. A small sample sent to the Smithsonian Institute came back with the note that it was industrial waste. Not until they sent a larger sample to the Institute that it was established that they had found a new type of pectolite mineral. After a long debate over the name, Miguel took his young daughter's name Larissa and the Spanish word for sea, mar, and formed Lari Mar to reflect the mineral's ocean-like appearance. The name stuck. As it turns out, the few stones they found were alluvial sediments washed into the sea by the Bauruco River. An upstream search revealed the in-situ outcrop in the range, and before soon, the Los Chupaderos mine tapped the only Larimar outcropping in the whole world. The 45-minute drive to the mine is a bone-rattling uphill struggle. The road is often taken care of, but a single heavy rain can wash it out completely. Even cemented stretches don't survive the Caribbean weather for long. And yet there are several small communities up here, the last of which is the mine itself. The mining town, a small shanty town, serves as a temporary accommodation for the miners and their families. Since it's so far away from everything, the community brings everything that it needs to sustain itself, living here as one big family. Because like with any family, their lives depend on each other. You wouldn't recognize the area as an extinguished volcano if it were not for the heaps of volcanic rocks dug out from the mine holes. The mines themselves are only a few feet from the shacks, holes dug either vertically or horizontally into the dead volcano. As a matter of fact, some just go down straight vertically before turning horizontally. Others begin horizontally and then go straight into the mount before going vertically and then horizontally again always zigzagging around following the Larimar veins. It's a virtual maze dug into the mountain. And there are dozens of holes and tunnels, perforating the steep slopes like a Swiss cheese. The deepest hole is believed to be at over 500 meters dug deep into the mountainside. The holes are claustrophobically narrow. They're held up by wooden beams and sometimes concrete, and it takes a special kind of courage to venture into them. Indeed, mining Larimar is dangerous. Although, according to the miners, cavens are not as common as one would believe, the most common peril is suffocation. To avoid this, each hole has been fitted with large PVC tubes that feed fresh air into them, powered by a primitive turbine. The tubes are also used for communication with the miners underground. One man is always assigned to make sure everything is in order and to stand by at the hole. On any given workday, there are on average 10 to 15 people in every hole, but the deeper the hole, the more people it needs. And there are several dozens of holes, which means there's an average of 600 miners toiling underground in the hole of the area at any given time. 
Their nationalities vary between Dominicans, Haitians, and even a few Venezuelans, all working side by side, their lives depending on each other. Income is based on shared profits. Groups of miners work in individual holes, and whatever that hole makes is shared equally among the miners. The average is around 500 pesos a day, which translates to about 12,000 pesos a month, or about 240 US dollars, or 200 euros. While not a lot, it is above the country's minimum wage of a little more than 8,000 pesos. And some months they can make much more if there is a big find of good quality. But then a hole also may run dry for months until the new vein is found. In that time, nobody makes any money. You just dig. The risk does not seem to equal the pay. But with few other options in the area besides farming, the miners are glad to work here, always hoping for the next big vein. Once the stones are extracted and taken down the mountain, they're sold to buyers, of which some own Larimar workshops sitting along the coastline. The export of raw stones has been banned to give the local artisans a chance to create unique Dominican-made jewelry. And to buy raw stones is also risky, because the individual rocks need first to be cut open. It is difficult to look into the stone, and if you have bad luck, there's only little of the blue pectolite inside. If the quality is good, the rocks are cut into pieces or slabs, which the artisan uses for his work. The slabs are cut to size, ground to shape, and polished to perfection, always using grinding wheels and water. In the hands of an experienced artisan, it can take only a few minutes, and a beautiful blue cabochon can emerge from a previously gray rock, ready to be set in silver or even gold, depending on the color or the shape of the crystal formation. The volcanic gem we call now volcanic blue sometimes shows as turquoise blue with white clouds, sometimes ocean green, and then sometimes with red copper freckles. And each sheening gem is singular and guards a scene of breathtaking resplendence of an image of the Caribbean Sea turned into a gemstone. All this makes Larimar more than just a pretty rock. It has become the gem ambassador of the Dominican Republic here in the center of the Caribbean.